Hello friends, I am your host Dr. Raja Nadir Jalal today with a new video. This is part 4 of my communication and interpersonal skills for CLAB 2 video series. Part 4 is about uh, counseling. Let's start our tutorial. What is counseling? Counseling is a process of talking about and working through your patient's personal problems, addressing them in a positive way by helping them to clarify the issues explore all the options and develop future strategies. Medical counseling helps patients get correct information to clarify concerns that may interfere with the decisions involved. And the goal of counseling is to enable the individual to make informed decisions regarding their health issues. For counseling, there is a stepwise approach which you can apply for most of the counseling stations. First of all, you need to check knowledge of your patient about their condition or the situation. You need to know how much the patient knows up till now, and you need to start counseling from that point. You need to check compliance of your patient with the advice or medications already given. And if there is compliance issue, then you need to explore what is the underlying cause of not complying with the advice or medication. You need to ask your patient why. You need to explore concerns and allow the patient to speak about their concerns and address them appropriately. Let them speak. Don't just keep talking on your own. Involve the patient throughout the discussion. In counseling stations, you need to take a relevant history, not detailed history. It should be focused more on past history and lifestyle, lifestyle history. For example, smoking, alcohol, drugs, dietary habits, and exercise. Then after that, you can do relevant examination and you need to pick up all positive findings from history and examination. And then you can start counseling, keeping in mind all the findings. Some useful tips about counseling scenarios. Never ever force your patient to follow your advice. Never say don't do this or do that. Only give options, only give suggestions and say it is advisable, it is recommended. Never accuse or criticize or judge your patients in counseling scenarios. It is a patient's right to decide which medication or treatment they take or refuse or the, any change they want to make in their lifestyle. However, you can use carrot and stick approach appropriately by telling the patient the benefits and, put, and uh, harmful effects of making or not making a change. In some cases, when patient refuses treatment or wants to leave the hospital against medical advice or refuses a treatment, then you need to check competence of your patient. And in counseling scenario, most of the time you already know the diagnosis and you don't go into uh, de uh, details of taking history, like in some scenarios where we need to make a diagnosis or exclude other differentials. So in counseling scenarios, you already know the diagnosis. Now I am going to discuss how to counsel a patient who is refusing treatment. First of all, as we discussed, you need to ask, would you please tell me why you are refusing treatment? Would you mind telling me why you don't want to take this medicine, for example? Does the medicine concerns you, concerns you in any way? Is it a fear about side effects or fear about addiction problem on the medicine or anything else bothering you? Patient may have seen someone having side effects with this medicine, for example, relative. You can ask about that. Patient may be worried about uh, her, his, his job being affected by taking this medicine, for example, insulin or any medication which can cause drowsiness. Then you have to acknowledge fear of the patient or concern of your patient by saying, I can see how you may feel against these medications. Given your relative had some nasty side effects, I can completely see where you are coming from. You can say, I can see that your job is really important to you and I can understand why you think this medicine may cause problems for you. You can suggest changes. You can offer that I can check with my seniors to make any change in, the, in this medicine, changing to some other medica medication which has less side effects or which uh, is more suitable to you. You need to acknowledge that you can say to your patient, you are absolutely right. You have every right to be involved in your own treatment and no one can force you to take any type of medi medication or treatment. And as a doctor, it is our job to go through the pros and cons and make sure you understand that and then allow you to decide for your 
yourself. But you have to stress the importance of the treatment or medication by saying that the reason we usually give this medicine in this situation is that if we don't treat this condition with it, potentially you could have serious complications and it can even be life threatening in some cases. There can be a patient which you have with which you may need to counsel who wants self discharge against medical advice. You need to find out underlying reason why to leave the why the patient wants to leave the hospital. You can ask is there any particular reason that's stopping you from staying in the hospital today? You can offer help and support. I can help with certain things that may be causing you to need to go home. You can acknowledge that it is understandable how you may feel like this. No one, wa no one wants to be in, in, in hospital. Let's see how we can ma make things easier for you and make your recovery as quick as possible. But you need to stress the importance of staying in hospital. The reason why we want you to keep you in the hospital is that your condition is uh, serious and uh, needs to be monitored closely. Otherwise, things can go either way. You can say that I don't want to worry you too much, but your situation can be life threatening if not treated now. It is really important that you understand this thing and stay with us until it's safe to go home. You need to explain to your patient that your patient's health is your priority and why patient needs to stay in the hospital. And that is because we need to make sure that everything is all right for you before you leave the hospital. You can ask your patient that can anyone else look after your kids or for example your pets or can manage issues at home rather than you leaving the hospital too early. It is for your own benefit. We are worried about you. Is it possible you can call the place of work and explain what's going on? Maybe they can relieve you unless you are completely fine to go back to your job and we can uh, give you a sick note to give to your boss or manager at workplace. If a patient still doesn't want to stay in the hospital, make sure the patient has the mental capacity as I discussed earlier and try to agree on a middle ground. Mr. X, you are right. We can't stop you against your wish, but could we have an alternative plan in place because I am still worried about you. Is it possible for you to come back within the next few hours, maybe next couple of days to see a specialist or to have the test done which you need? If a patient wants to leave, get the form signed stating self-discharge against medical advice. Remember that an adult patient with capacity to make that decision is free to leave even against medical advice. Now coming to dietary counseling, you need to explain certain things to your patient. You can say Mrs. X, there are many benefits that you may find to changing diet, for example, just to mention a few, your weight may come down, your cholesterol may be reduced, you may feel more energy. Would you consider substituting unhealthy diet such as burgers and chips with some healthy options? You can stress the negative side by saying that if you continue with your diet as it is, unfortunately, there are few negative implications. Your blood pressure may go on to rise. Your cholesterol is likely to go up. Your weight may go up as well. And all this will increase your risk of other things like heart attack and stroke. Then you need to acknowledge the difficulty. I can understand this is really difficult to achieve a balanced diet with modern day challenges. It can be difficult when everything in front of you is unhealthy. It's very difficult to make right choices. I agree with you. Habits are very difficult to change, but sometimes taking smaller but regular steps can be easier than making big changes at once. You need to stress the need of making a change. One of the reasons we are talking about diet change is to reduce your risk of having a heart attack, stroke, and cancer. You can ask the patient, they have any idea. Is there any another way you think we, may, we can support you? Sometimes, Talking with other people can help in making these changes. We can arrange an appointment with a dietitian if you think it will help. You can explain further that if you can make some key dietary changes, they will bring about a significant improve, improvement in your overall health. For example, changing red meat to white meat, changing cooking style for, from frying to grilling, changing butter to olive oil or grape seed oil, focusing on five fruits and vegetables a day, and eating at least two portions of fish per week, one of them being oily, reducing salt intake to six grams per day and reducing things like sugar. Another important scenario might be counseling about exercise. I can understand how it is a challenge to fit exercise into your normal day, Mr. X. It is not easy to change habits. I appreciate that, but there are many benefits of having an active lifestyle and having a regular exercise. For example, reducing risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. 
unfortunately, if you don't exercise, you are increasing your risk of cancer, increasing your risk of heart disease and diabetes. Unfortunately, if you don't exercise, but increasing your risk of cancer, heart disease and diabetes, it is there are many things you can do. For example, how about parking a mile away from your workplace and walking the rest of the way? How about taking the first few flights of stairs before calling a lift? How about using a fitness tracker and set up some daily targets? Then there, there, there may be a counseling about obesity, a station about obesity counseling. You can start uh, that Mrs. X or BMI is a measure of our height against weight. A BMI between 18.5 and 25.9 means you are in a healthy weight range. A BMI of 25 to 29.9 means you are overweight. 30 to 39.9 means you are obese. 40 or above means you are severely obese, which is called morbid obesity. Unfortunately, your BMI is on the higher side. It does come in the obese category, and this does come with some risks. Are you aware of any health risks that obesity can lead to? For example, physical changes it brings. It can cause serious and potentially life-threatening conditions such as type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, and some types of cancers and stroke. And it reduces quality of life as well. It can cause many psychological problems such as depression and low self-esteem. It is important for you to take steps to tackle obesity. Are you aware how much your health can be improved through reducing weight, even losing what seems like a small amount of weight, such as 3% or more of your original body weight and maintaining this for life can significantly reduce your risk of developing obesity-related obesity complications, which I have already mentioned, like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. And if patient agrees to consider, then give advice about healthy diet, exercise, options of medicines, surgery, and other supports available, depending upon the situation. There are also stations about alcohol, smoking, and drug addiction counseling. These are almost similar stations and have nearly similar approach. You can start by saying, Mr. X, of course, you have the right to make decisions about your lifestyle and habits, but there are several health implications of drinking too much alcohol, smoking, and drug addiction. I think it is important that we run through possible harmful effects. You can ask your patient, have you ever considered to cut back on alcohol, on smoking, or drug addiction, whatever the case is? If not, ask what you like to think about it. Ask how the patient feels about their uh, alcohol, alcohol intake or smoking habit or drug addiction. Then you need to ask about the guide, guidelines about uh, healthy alcohol intake. You can tell your patient if patient doesn't know that current guidance is to drink no more than 14 units of alcohol per week for men and women. And you should also have two to three alcohol-free days per week. It is also important, important to ask your patient that is there any particular reason that you drink or smoke or take drugs? such as stress, boredom, habit, or peer pressure. You might need to address these issues. And you need to explain to your patient that you are not judging your patient. You can say that drinking alcohol is a very common activity. We are not here to judge you. We are here just to guide you on its potential effects on health. I think it is important that you consider reducing your alcohol. You can say it is advisable or it is highly advisable. You can ask your patient, are you aware of some of the effects? Of, ex of excess alcohol consumption or drinking or smoking or taking drugs on your body and, and life in general. You need to check knowledge of your patient. You need to ask about withdrawal effects. What happens if you do not drink or smoke or take drugs for a few days? Do you think you would be able to reduce your alcohol intake or would you be able to quit smoking? Or do you need any help? How can we best help you? If you consider there are many things we can do. We have lots of support suggestions and medicines available to help you to quit smoking or quit drugs or reduce alcohol consumption. So uh, guys, this is the end of part four, which was about counseling. There are many scenarios about counseling, but these uh, were the main and uh, the, these were the main things, basics, which you, I, I thought you everyone needs to know uh, about counseling stations. There are some other scenarios which I will discuss in my next video. So thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget to watch uh, remaining parts of IPS videos. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get notification about my latest videos. And if you find this helpful, please also share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye.